Welcome back, my fellow patriots, to the Save Our Republic daily video series. Yesterday, we talked about the importance of enumerated powers, that being that the federal government only has powers specifically given to it in the Constitution. And I promised you that we'd talk about the importance of the states. Now, most people, if they have had any kind of review of federalism and the importance of states uh, in K-12 education, especially in the most, uh, you know, last few decades, they probably were fed something like, well, it's important for states to exist because they're the laboratories of democracy. And so they can do experiments across the country and figure out uh, different approaches to education and social policies and economics and tax policy. And then uh, the federal government will be able to figure out which one is the best, and then they will be able to adopt it. And that's all well and good, but that's a complete misunderstanding of the importance of federalism and enumerated powers. In fact, this comes from a uh, footnote from, or, or maybe it's in the text of the opinion, but I think it's a footnote uh, from a Supreme Court justice in a Supreme Court opinion uh, extolling the virtues of the laboratories of democracy. Uh, that Supreme Court justice, with all due respect, was... Uh, completely out to lunch about the importance of the states. And today I'm going to talk about the fundamental importance of the states in connection with freedom and liberty. Tomorrow I'll talk about a separate subject, but today I want to talk about freedom. The point of the federal constitution is to protect the unalienable rights of the people. That's its purpose. If you read the Declaration of Independence that we discussed earlier, the purpose of government is to protect the unalienable rights of the people, and the founding fathers in that generation understood that what they were doing with the Constitution was securing the freedom of the people. And they thought that having one central government, having all the power over legislation, would inevitably lead to tyranny and oppression. Yesterday I talked about how the power to do good is the power to do evil. Um, and that's absolutely true. Um, and as I talked about yesterday. If you have a bad policy implemented across the country, there's no refuge. Everyone suffers the same. If you get rid of separation of powers and you have everyone all authority in a central governing uh, king, military junta, whatever, a, a, a legislative assembly, doesn't matter, that will inevitably lead to a dictatorship and mass slaughter. And if you think I'm wrong, I challenge you to go look at the history of mankind when one person or a small body of people has all the power in the world, uh, they will exercise it and destroy and annihilate their enemies. Look at the French Revolution, the General Assembly there. Uh, look at the uh, Nazi Germany, Soviet Union, Mao's uh, dictatorship in, the, in, in uh, China, etc. The history is replete with this. So the founders said, we're going to chop up power among the different branches of government. So we have three branches of government. And we'll talk about that in another episode. And we're going to chop up government, not just between the branches within a government, but between governments. So the federal government only has a certain amount of authority, and the state governments only have a certain amount of authority. And there is a built-in tension on purpose so that these two will clash and fight over what's appropriately de delegated between each other, and they are supposed to be jealous guardians of their of their powers. Um, and so that clash is intended to ensure liberty. I want to give you another example of how liberty f gets flushed out here. Let's go back, because I know we're in this era and things are, you feel stuck, but let's go back to the 1930s. There was not anywhere in the country that recognized gay marriage. The idea that homosexual conduct would be constitutionally protected and recognized would have been a laughable proposition. And in fact, it was a felony in many states. So if you were that persuasion and the federal government had total absolute power to criminalize that behavior, then everyone in the country would live under that oppressive regime if you believe it's oppression, right? But there may be pockets of states 
in local communities that are more understanding and forgiving of, of that behavior and maybe encourage it. And so you can go to New York City or you can go to San Francisco and live in a community that's protected because there is not one rule over everyone. You can extrapolate that to any social idea that we're, we're grappling with today. The idea is that if you don't have a federal government imposing the same rule on everybody, hopefully there's some state government that is protecting what you think is important and you can go live there. And people do vote by their feet. They move. Uh, you know, clear examples are people move where there's no income tax. Uh, people move where there's uh, creativity uh, fostered in one way or another. People move because there is a great transit system. People move because of wonderful schools. Well, if everybody is under the same regime, the same mediocrity or oppressive regime, then you can't do that. To have a truly oppressive government generally requires you have you capture all three branches of the federal government and you capture all three branches of the state government and then there's no other state government that is uh, of your ilk. So remember, the power to do good is the power to do evil. If you centralize it and that power wraps around and whips you in the face because it now is implementing a policy that you uh, are no longer in favor of, maybe yesterday it was in favor of what you wanted and today it's not, and look at what's going on with Trump and Biden and the executive orders, that's exactly what's going on. If you have that division of power, then people can find pockets of freedom or, or other communities that favor their way of life. And that's essential to happiness and freedom. And again, that clash between the states and the federal government is designed to protect liberty. Until tomorrow, God bless you. God bless America. And don't forget about PatriotWeek.org. AmericaSurvivalGuide.com, as well as Patriot Lessons, American History and Civics Podcast. Share, subscribe, uh, you know the drill. God bless you. God bless America.